Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 63 of Two Left Thumbs, your source of weekly gaming news and updates. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, a guy spending $2 million on a game character for his friend to accidentally sell it for much less. Uh, Bluepoint Games uh, is teasing a new project. Uh, there's a Super Metroid remake and Metroid Prime trilogy coming to Switch, possibly. Um, Cyberpunk is apparently shorter than what... The Witcher 3 is going to be, from what we've heard. And Rockstar's, Rockstar is rumored to be doing a new IP set in the medieval era. We also have all the gaming deals across all gaming platforms just for you. I'm Deft Puppies. Joining me here today is Grey as a Gamer. Dude, how are you? I'm good, mate. Very good. Yourself. This I'm fine fantastic. Sunday evening. I'm pretty fucking good, man. It's It's been a good week. I've had I a good week. <laughs> No, um, no computer issues. Nothing. No, nothing. I've I've survived. Oh well. Hang on, no, nothing burning down. Just touching wood there. Uh, <laughs> nothing yeah. burning down. No computers are on fire or broken. For now, we're okay. We're doing well. Um, cool. Yeah. What have you been up to this week? Tell me um, the things and stuff. The things and stuff, mate. I was away again for a few days this week. Um, but once I came back, I finished off Death Stranding. Oh, nice. Done. Completed Done. it after my, um, I think I ended up hitting about 70 hours. I won't go into great depth here because we will be doing a, um, spoiler cast type thing on it, but man, the ending of that game is it's pretty powerful and it's so well done. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's so well, it, you, you can tell a difference when a, you know, uh, developer invests a lot of money into it like their characters and their performance so like using norman reedus and mads and whatnot it was just awesome like and you can actually tell it's the actors doing it yeah it's not a yeah and it's all mo capped and it really it comes through so good the ending perfect good ending excellent happy with the game and uh, overall i mean I'm, I'm sure you were but I mean, you put 70 One hours into it, so I'm assuming percent. it was okay. It was good. And then, mm -hmm. then um, into Pokemon, to Sword and Shield. Yeah? You, Getting through it? That, I've got uh, a lot further now. Um, I think last week I was up to the maybe the first gym, uh, first gym I think. Um, yeah, I think now about that, I right? am up to the final champion. So done my gym badge, all complete. Uh, I assume the main story is done, I guess. I don't know. It's wherever I'm up to. I'm pretty sure this is the final battle. Um, it's yeah. against the champ, and that's it. Um, and was my first loss of the game. Oh, no. You've taken an L. <laughs> Flawless taken record is ruined. Finally. And that was solely because I was had my phone in one hand, and I was just pushing buttons. I wasn't even paying attention to what he was sending out. That's how ridiculously easy the game is. And yeah it's so annoying about it it's, it's <laughs> an it has really annoyed me and i had this image in my head um while i was playing the game like yesterday or something i was thinking of the witcher 3 and yeah. pokemon like could you imagine like smash that together that would be pretty fucking cool that I'd would be that. that would be awesome i mean you keep it keep it with the the the, the cartoon aesthetic you know, you don't have to make it all serious and gory or whatnot. But imagine that world, something so big with those types of missions and being able to just go wherever you want. Or and... even just like doing like a, like a, even like a, honestly like a Pokemon International where it's all, because all the regions are kind of next to each other. Mm. And just open it up, right? Because I mean, I mean, I don't like games of service as much, but for Pokemon, this kind of works. You open it up and instead of like releasing two new games every year, which is, kind of shitty when there's minimal differences anyway but just like add a region yep and then you know yep. you go into that region and then if they wanted to because i know they have a problem with overpopulation of pokemon which is why they cut off a lot of the pokemon this time around um you could like so you open one region and then you close the very first one as far as certain pokemon or they become unavailable to find and you just kind of rotate them through there'd be a way to balance it it'd be tricky but i think that'd be, be cool be and just give pokemon this like constant because it is but it's so segmented within the games it'd be cool just to kind of explore yeah it could be a bit much yes. for the switch though a bit much 
maybe. Oh, I mean, man, the regions the, wouldn't like, even have make, to be get that it big down, make it work. Like get yeah, it to yeah. get it to whatever works on that system. I mean, I'm just using the the Witcher three as like a to get like a visual representation of what it could be like. Yeah, and it's like man, that would be awesome. Like, even if you had to fast travel to different regions, right? So it was just like you go to one region, you just pop in there. There's no like travel, like physical traveling between them, but you can roam around the regions freely. That segments it a bit and would take less of a load on the system. I think anything. I just yeah. Game. Damn it! Please innovate on your game next. Net. Well, we damn well know it's not going to be the next time because it's just going to be bloody ultra fucking pokemons again ultra sword and ultra shield will be the next one for sure hey man if you can trend. sell the same game twice with minor differences repetitively and oh, make man, a shit ton that's... of money off it i mean it sucks but they've been doing it since mm. red and blue and it's just i don't know i, know, I don't got, think that's gonna change it, shows, it, soon. it shows you though the power of this ip and mm. how strong it is that they can do this. No other brand would really be able to get away with this. Like, oh God, no. could you imagine, like, everyone takes the piss out of Call of Duty every year because it's the same game-ish um, each time. When it's not, it is a, it is a vastly, you know, different skin all over it. But yeah. could you imagine if they um, released Call of Duty every year and it was the exact same campaign, except you just did it in reverse? Like you started from the end and you worked your way backwards, <laughs> but two different versions because yeah, or... you play as two different characters. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and just that is essentially what How, we should probably Game stop Freak talking. Do. We're going to give Activision mm-hmm. ideas. Yeah, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. But and overall, though, I I is I don't know if it's because I haven't been I haven't played them in a very long time apart from Let's Go, but that was like you know that's a side thing. I yeah, that's not real. It's not counted as like a mainline a, Pokemon a, game. No, that's just a fan, one of the fan yeah. service game. Yeah. Um, overall, though, I've enjoyed it. I have had fun. It's just, yeah, could have been. How did you find the um the open regions, like the the open areas that they had? I don't go online while you're in there because the switch tanks. Oh, Holy really? Christ! Yeah, you get like ten frames a second, man, running around. If you get like Jesus. multiple trainers coming next to you. Mm. Yeah, it just gr- grinds to a halt really bad. Turn it offline and it's not nowhere near as bad as that. Yeah. Um, but the wild area is the best part. Like, 100%. That's Why not make the game yeah. all of that? Like, get rid of the well, routes. Maybe, like, maybe, maybe this stuff. was them kind of tinkering with that and going, all right, we'll put out a smaller scale version first before we, like, go balls to the oh, wall. It has to be. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it has to be. Like, mm. um, yeah, that's that's what it, that's to me is what it should be. You could if they did the next one next year and it came out and it was just like here is this ginormous open map like that, um, with the Pokemon roaming around in it. Yeah, dude, I'd be I'd be so and to get to certain so areas, like I mean they have it now to get to certain areas, you need certain equipment like the bike or um certain things to get through locked areas like the cut attack. And have that for like you need to get like climbing gear and shit to get into the mountain areas and stuff. That'd be really cool. Yeah, they, it's so cool. There's, I'd be there's down. So for many cool things that they could do with it. And that's yeah. what I mean. Like, it, it all it takes is five minutes with someone else, and you can the cool ideas that you come up with. But here we are, man. Like, how long's this game been going for? We're Not still long. doing the same thing. <laughs> we're still doing you can't blame them because it makes them a ridiculous amount of money but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's it that, that's it that's no, been your week yeah been that's, frustrated that's been with pokemon week, been boring no, and easy. no 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 not not for us, just <laughs> bored is a good a good kind of way sorry to put it is yeah that it's because the gameplay it's fun like because you want to play it you want to collect them you want to see the story even though it's like much it's the same easy, like simple <laughs> Um, but there is like, I was, I was on my phone, man, literally with yeah. the switch and as because the, the gameplay, the moment to moment parts are just so ridiculously easy. You don't need to do anything other than push the buttons to skip through it. Yeah. It's mash a, yeah. That's and I it. purposefully ignored a lot of stuff to try and keep myself under leveled. 
Yeah. So when I got to gym fights, um, a little bit more challenging. I was, yeah, to give it something, anything. But even entering gym fights, you know, three levels, five levels below, you still wipe the floor with them. It's... <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Uh, I think I'm getting it soon, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, not being bored with it, but I'm looking forward to playing Pokemon. I, I do enjoy playing. It's one of those games though. It's kind of it like you know, it's easy, and you can, it's like you can just mindlessly play it and still really enjoy it. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it is one of those. What um, what have you been playing? I have abandoned everything and become a Jedi, and that's 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 my life now. That's all I've played this week is Fallen Order, and uh, man, like I, I've 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 I've, I've got like. I was about 20 plus ish hours in now. So I'm kind of at like the very, t I've got a, I think we were discussing earlier before the class. I'm like right at the tail end of yep. the story. Um, and I see what you mean with the combat now. It is a little bit dicky. Some of the animations kind of get in the way of doing the things mm. you want to do when you do it. Like I found a lot of times when I'd hit the heal button, instead of me healing, I'd have to wait for this animation. And while I was doing that animation, I'd get totaled. Yeah. Um, so there was like all that extra kind of stuff to think about it. And like it, it, the game isn't at all perfect, but it like the whole thing together is just so good. And you just don't want to stop playing it. Like, I think I was up till like about three 30 this morning, still playing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, and I, I was just like, I, just, like, I, just, I don't want to yeah. stop. I was the same. I, I, I'm at this point now where I know where I'm near the end. I'm like, I don't want it to end now. I, I need more of this. I mean, I could like for for respawn to do this like this style of game for the first time and do it so well. I'm really yeah. excited to see what they do with what they've got now. Now that they've kind of put it out there, they've got some feedback from the wider gaming community and anyone that's played it, and it's been out in the wild for a while. I'd be interested yeah. to see if they can like really tighten up the combat and make those few minor changes. And it could be like it could be fucking amazing, but so it's probably my favorite year, year, favorite game I've played this year, like that I've enjoyed the most. Yep. Like I mean, I've enjoyed like I enjoyed Outer Worlds, and I can't even remember Gears. what else I played. Yeah, Gears. Like, I've enjoyed them all, and I've had a good time. But there, there's something about this game. I was like, this this is just feels so good to play, and just being in that it's... world. It's 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 such a weird thing because you know there's problems with the game and there's the occasional glitch and frame rate drops and the and like jumping is weird because sometimes you don't quite get there. It's a little bit wonky how that works, and I've fall my, found myself falling off many many edges or oh, yeah. falling through tiny tiny gaps like that. Go I should have gone past. The line and it's just yeah, like, whoosh, straight past. <laughs> He's like it. just shorts. Oh my. Um, yeah. No, but it really is, it is the to me. It's the perfect Star Wars game, mm. but an imperfect video game. Yeah, it that doesn't kind of nail sense, the yeah. video game yeah. side right, but it pulls so well from the story of Star Wars and the IP of Star Wars. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. I think a, a lot of people are giving it a pass because of that. I yeah, mean, like don't Star don't get me wrong. Respawn did it. They nailed it. They did it. They did a cracker of a job for the first go. But when you actually really start to like, and the more obviously that I've settled on it, the more that some things really know me. Like, how do you think about the respawning mechanic in the game? Because everyone said this is like Star Wars story wise, this is the best, but you really got to suspend your like your belief in that. That you've got to um, eliminate that from your head because that makes no sense in any Star Wars related lore whatsoever. Yeah, I've, I've never seen anything. Star Wars, where it's just like, oh, I'll just let it go back to my meditation point. You know, you die in Star Wars, no, you yeah, dead, or you or you become part of the Force. Rather, um, spoilers for those who haven't been watching Star Wars their entire lives. What are you doing here, listening to this cast? So, <laughs> you watch Star Wars. Um, <laughs> but I mean, sure, I think that there's there's a point there where you're looking at it. And you say, all right, well, you still need to be able to respawn the character because you can't have permadeath. I mean, it could be an option. I mean, someone's run mm -hmm. it through on Grandmaster without being hit once already. I was watching that video today. That was intense. Um, but you still need a system. I think the meditation system that they've got works. Like, it's okay. 
it works because that's the game mechanic they chose. They chose to yeah. go the Souls style of game mechanic, and that's how that functions into that game, and that's kind of loosely tied to their combat. They could have, when originally coming up with a game, pick another, I don't know, pick pick any other mechanic, I guess. It's something else. I mean, just, what else have they got? I've they've got, people complain they've got about a, this a plain now. respawn, which is just, oh, I'm back here now. I mean... Yeah. Or what else? What other? What have we got? There's like the oh, I'm back here now. There's the have to bring yourself back through some weird gimmicky mechanic that takes too long because you just want to get back oh, to where I'm you sure. were. But I, th I yeah. think I think like, the way they've settled on it with the meditation point, I think that's probably the best way they could have done it to make it fit in with that universe that little bit. I mean, it doesn't make sense because of the way the universe works, but um. I think it's probably their best option. I'm okay with it. I, I, think, it's, with I it. think it's solely there because they had to make that fit into the gameplay mechanic of being able to replay an area because you're coming back through areas so many times. So it explains yeah, how enemies come back. Also, it helps you level up and gain new powers and stuff like that by constantly refighting the same, the same yeah, enemies so every you, time. Your other option is checkpointing at the ship all the time. And having fast travel. Yeah. yeah, or just checkpoints in general. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, it's all... I mean, I've seen... Like, it didn't bother me too much during the playthrough because I don't get that... Like, I kind of just left that out of my head. It's like, all right. Yeah. I can see why he's did it. I'm just going to play it and enjoy it. But I've seen a lot of people get triggered by that. Like, it's, 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 it's whatever. It's, it's, it's like, it's explain why mechanic. this is in the game yeah it's, it's a game it mechanic just that's game. what it is and sure. i think they they they've chose something that was fitting with the theme of the game so yeah and works i'm good with it um well, that's good yeah. that's all i've well, done this week let's go into some freebies then what do you reckon sounds good let's do it all right this week over on psn so we are as of recording one day ahead of time like early so for your psn PlayStation Plus games, you have Titanfall 2 and Monster Energy Supercross, which I'm not too not too sure what that one's about. I assume it's going to be motorbikes. Is that tied into the Death Stranding Energy. universe at all? I think it has to be. <laughs> it has to be. What is with Monster Energy, man, getting into everything? Oh, they just want to be everywhere, man. They need that monopoly. Why not? Why not? But Titanfall 2... I mean, oh, it's game. it's it's one of it's one of the very few games that this cast will, will and always wholly recommend you go and play because it's yeah, fucking it's incredible. It's free, so it's always been really cheap. But go download it now. I'm probably yeah, even gonna yeah, go and no download it so I have a copy on PlayStation as well. Yeah. Well, then we've got our deal of the week, so it is still continuing on from the black. Friday, so there are still way too many deals to list on the PlayStation Network. Same deals as last week, some of the big picks are God of War, Shadow Keep, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Detroit Become Human. All of those are like $18, Shadow Keep $32. Go and have a look because they are all top quality games, and there's hundreds of deals, hundreds of there. Yeah, there's been so many to deals. To get into those. Yeah. Xbox and with our weird games of gold this week are uh, insane robots. It's actually not too bad. And Toy Story 3. What is that? Toy Story 3. I, I don't know. They were there though. I don't know. That I mean, Toy Story 3 is whatever. I'll download it for my kids. It's fine. Um, insane robots looks really interesting. I looked a bit more into it. And basically, it's kind of that Pokemon formula where you walk around, a, this world's uh, randomly generated, so you get like a small map, and you have to roam around like card style battling, like 1v1ing other robots that you find in the world. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so think, it, it's very, like, it's like in that similar kind of vein, is where you collect all these little, little robots, and then you just take them out to battle, and it's that 1v1 style from Pokemon as well. So you either have different weaknesses and strengths, it's turn based. Yeah, nice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I've never is it old or new? This is newer. Um okay. I think it may have came out like last year, I think. If that. 
And there you go. Um, um, but yeah, definitely worth checking out. I'll, yeah. probably, I'll probably pick that up and give it a go this week if I get time. Rightio, on with our deals uh, with gold this week. You got Guacamole 2 for $8, Yuku Islands Express for $8, and Moonfall Ultimate for $10. You got any information on those ones, Bobs? Guacamole, Guacamole 2 is um platformer Metroidvania style game. Really good. I've heard lots of lots lots of good reviews about it. Um Yoku's Island Express is a 2D platformer with marble physics. So think of like your your old like your pinball games. Oh, so you use those pinball. Marble. No, not marble, the... marble. So marble. Oh, okay. pinball, if that makes it clearer with my <laughs> shitty accent and slurred speech. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you, you're, um, you have to get through this world and, like, so you have got to kind of fling yourself around like a pinball to get through the different layers and the different sections. That looked interesting. Yep. And um, mm. Moonfall Ultimate is a 2D side-scrolling uh, RPG. It's kind of fantasy, but fantasy-based. Looks really, really cool. Always love those. Now, over on the Switch this week, we have Breath of the Wild for $42 and Freedom Finger. Yes, Freedom Finger. Oh, man. Right. Freedom Finger. So I mean, everyone knows Breath of the Wild. $42. Yeah. I figured that was a pretty decent price for a Switch game, especially. Um, especially in Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't <laughs> drop it under that price. It's yeah, they, they won't go much lower. All their larger titles yeah. are about that same price. I'm like, oh, Breath of the Wild, so I'll put it on. Um, yeah, Freedom Finger though, set. this game looks fucking hilarious. So it's a space, it's a side-scrolling space shooter, but you play as a giant. Your your vehicle is a giant middle finger. It's just like constantly like this across the screen, and you're shooting <laughs> out of the finger, and you can grab other space. You can grab anything out of the world and use it as a weapon, and it will start fire. So it, it, like each different enemy type will have its own kind of attack, and you can grab that. And then use that to shoot. It has an absolutely <laughs> rocking soundtrack. It sounds incredible. Hey, this ha- this has um, it's got Nolan North attached to it as well. He's one of the main characters in it. Um, really? Yeah. It's like, there's, there's, it sounds like it should be up with the uh, weird games of gold for the week. It should be, but it looks really fun. Just like for a, right. for a space shooter, man. It's just like <laughs> it's, it's so good. I love these titles. They're great. <laughs> nice. And then over on the Epic Store, we have Raymond Legends. Still, that was there last week, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. No. I, I said it was coming up because it has like what's right. There we go, yes. But Raymond yeah. Legends is really good, especially if you ra- love Rayman at, at all. It's like, it's all the game's best bits just put together in multi-levels. You can go into the old games and visit those levels and stuff. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I haven't played them in a while, but used to play them a lot back in the day. Back in the day. So, news and updates for this week. Now, Mr. Puppies, we had some cool things to get through here this week. It's been a bit. Yeah. (laughs) I haven't read through the details yet, but um, I've seen the titles. Well, I have. I have. So, to kick things off this week, a man spends $2 million on a game character which his friend accidentally sold for $813. So, according to South China Morning Post, a man in China spent an eye-watering $2 million on his character in the MMORPG Justice Online. His buddy accidentally sold the said character for a mere $813. The man has filed a lawsuit against the game company NetEase and his friend, former friend, I would imagine, that you friend, would imagine. Def- <laughs> yeah, defendant. <laughs> had been- so he got loaned the character and reportedly tried to sell it back to the man for 81 grand. Like this- you can't make this stuff up. So instead, he listed it. It was listed for $813. So obviously, he's stuffed up there on That's the NetEase game marketplace. Important. Yeah. And it was soon purchased by an unrelated player. During the court, uh, meditation that followed, mediation, sorry, that followed, the defendant claimed that shockingly low price was due to a typo introduced by exhaustion after a marathon gaming session. I mean, we've all been there, right? 
I have an epic gaming session. I... And then you like go to type. He's like, what are my hands doing right now? <laughs> hey, I always do my multi-million dollar business deals after a 24-hour gaming session. Exactly, right? That's the best time it's to do it. it. You've it got, is you've when got you're that laser focused. He needs more G fuel. That's what he needs. He would have been fine. He was Someone totally get that out of cherry G fuel. <laughs> Someone find a ten percent discount. Get a code to that man right now. <laughs> that is insane. But I mean, so, just let's just stop. All right, because I mean, sure, a dude selling his friend's character. A dude spent two million dollars on a fucking character in a game. Mm -hmm. I haven't even heard of this fucking game. Justice Online. What? Are, what even is that? Hang on. I got to search. It's a big, quite a large game over in uh, over in China. Okay. Righto. And it's owned by NetEase too, which are. Uh, I mean, NetEase. Didn't huge. NetEase just? They're doing the um deal with Bungie now, aren't they? Yeah, they did. Was it NetEase? Or was it the other one? I think it was NetEase. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know. There's a few big ones over there, though. But that is um, that's an incredible amount of money. Obviously, nice. he's a quite wealthy person and he doesn't really care about his cash. But two million dollars on the game. That is, I just, wow, holy shit! Like, how long has this game been out for? Do we know? No, nah, not too sure, man. Not too sure. No, a lot of those games over there, they get changed, their names change, and they come around. It's like a, the same game, but under a different kind of sort of brand. And Yeah, true. Still, though, yeah. $2 million on a character. Well, I just... I can't even... I mean, if you're rich, do whatever the fuck you want with your money, I guess. But still, it's a lot of money. How excited just to would you be to um, be the guy who picked it up for $813? I know, right? Fucking... One of those bargain bin deals you find is like, this is fucking <laughs> gold, mate. Yeah. Thing, yeah, we walk through the market and you see that not tiny thing. It's like, definitely have to buy it. Yeah, got to yeah, get it. I mean, well Ben Ben brings up the other point in chat. I mean, how is there that much stuff to buy? Like, what is costing that much in the game? That's super valid. I have no idea. What the hell could you purchase for that? Like, yeah, what could, how much could they make in the game to you to buy it? I Unless know, like, it's like XP or it's I mean, it it's just like a pay to win kind of thing. Like, it has to be like levels yeah. or something. Yeah. It has, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, something like something like time saving currency. But I mean that, I mean there'd be there'd be cosmetics that they just charge a shit ton for too. But then again, there's only so many cosmetics you can buy. So it'd have to be like a pay to win situation. Either way, kids, stay away from microtransactions because this is what can happen. That's horrible. Yeah, that's... <laughs> next up, we have Blue Point Games is uh, continuing to seemingly tease their next project. So, Blue Point Studios is back to making some more obscure tweets that could be teasing their next project. The team, most notably known for remaking old games from last gen, like Shadow of the Colossus, has been dropping cryptic hints on its social media over the last few months, with this one being the latest. So... There is a little riddle here. I'm going to read it out. We don't know what the game is yet, but let's see what you think. To classics we play, our blood, sweat, tears give thanks. To family and fans eager you stay, cheers rekindle flames. Thanks. Today's feast, tomorrow rest, soon the beast freed from jest. Temptation we shun, then on to the next. We rest to further adorn the genesis an era reborn. What do you think that could possibly mean? Well, it's clearly Half Life Three. It has to be. That's exactly has to be what right. <laughs> um, Half Life Three. Half Life. Oh, what what else have Blue Point done? I mean, the Shadow of the Colossus. What else? What are old games have they done? Because we oh, can get a theme from on what the spot. Yeah, no, I can't remember. So it. That's they what I'm asking I, you. they are predominantly PlayStation. So yeah. to me, this is Demon Souls. 100 percent could be yeah yeah well you got there's some there's some themes there from demon souls that makes yeah. sense especially like um rekindling flames um blood sweat and tears is an obvious one um freeing the beast that is the whole point of the game well sort of 
Um, yeah. That's what I'm leaning towards. And I'm, holy Christ, I hope it is true because Demon Souls is such a good game. And if yeah, they could remake... I don't think I've played that one. I haven't played a lot of PlayStation Re- games though, so... If I they mean, remake that, man, bring it into... You know, give it a good modern shakeover. Oh, I'm so keen for it. So keen. But yeah, that's what that's what I think it is. And I hope it is because these guys are really good too. They um they've done some they have done some really good yeah, stuff. Shadow of the like, Colossus looked really, really good. Yeah, they did it and they were so faithful to it. And it's like I did remi- uh, remember I was watching a YouTube video on the Shadow Colossus on their remaking it of Blue Point. Yep. And the the detail they went into, it's not like they just got all the art assets and everything and kind of redid it. They got the code and like ingrained the code back into the game. So oh, it wow. still had the skeleton of the old game incorporated to the to the new game with everything new put over. They just kind of put the polish did... the extra polish on top of it. Well, yeah, they made it looking like incredibly awesome mm. while giving it updated, you know, controls and stuff like that. So it didn't feel too old. Um yeah, they do some really good stuff. And I hope nice. it's uh I hope it's Demon Souls. Be all over that. Next up are a Super Metroid remake and Metroid Prime Trilogy Trilogy HD coming to the Nintendo Switch. So we have heard a Super Metroid remake and the Prime Trilogy are reportedly on their way to the Switch. New claims have been made by a noted Nintendo insider who has suggested suggested that the two games are on their way to the console. The claims have been made by Leaky Panda. So a Twitter user who has previously correctly predicted uh, the Nintendo Direct presentations, including the Banjo-Kazooie unrevealing in the Smash Brothers DLC. So this guy has got some good track record. He's got some, he's got with, some credit there. I mean, yeah. Nintendo's been killing it with like bringing things back and putting things on the Switch. So this, I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised. This would be really good though. Do you think this will be like a, as a separate thing, or do you think they'll do what they did with like the old Genesis games? Was it the Genesis? No, not Sega. That's the wrong one. Never mind. But with the older games, and they had <laughs> attached them to live. Sorry, we were just talking Genesis in the poem, and it stuck in my head. Uh, uh, yes. No. <laughs> um, no, well, it does say uh, it does say a remake and a trilogy of Metroid Prime. So this could all. I guess happen before Metroid Four, because they have announced that they're working on it. So that yeah, is coming, be... but they've just never given a date. So they might, they might release this as a kind of a pre-hype, and, I, and Super Metroid Four is coming in six months from now, or whatever. And yeah, I think board. they're going to have to Go because on. a lot of people wouldn't know the Metroid games that well. Yeah, it a is. Lot of people would need a refresh. Would not have a clue. Yeah, they need a refresh and whatnot so yeah i think it's um pretty legit and should be should be good if they um yeah. if they do the remake really well and hopefully well, it does all said, that and they're, they're, they're known for doing good remakes so it'll yeah. be fantastic hopefully cool as uh, so next one on the list is cyberpunk so welcome back cyberpunk we haven't spoken about you in yeah, a while a minute. and no, it does make you. perfect sense that we're starting to hear about this game now because we're heading into christmas oh. it's Three months. months? Three months, yeah. Three but months, we're also yeah. past that that crazy launch of all those games at the end of this year. That's all done with, so... Yeah. It's Cyberpunk 2077. 2077 main campaign will be shorter than The Witcher's 3 story, but it will be made up for it in much higher replayability. This is coming from CG Project Red themselves. According to an attendee at the developer's annual community event in Poland, CD Projekt Red is yet to measure the length of the game when all the encounters and smaller side quests are taken into account, but it did confirm that the main story and major side quests will take less time to complete than The Witcher's 3's. Game length site How Long to Beat measures The Witcher 3's campaign, the main campaign only, as taking an average of 51 hours to complete. I didn't... Sounds about right. The Witcher 3 side quest system was reportedly described as a single line with a bunch of branches sticking out, where in comparison, CD Projekt Red has said Cyberpunk 2077 side missions will often evolve into further side quests, which can then turn, uh, which will then impact other quests, including the main story. 
Oh god, that is gonna ruin me. <laughs> yeah, me too. That is gonna ruin me. Oh, shiny side quest. We'll go to this real quick. Yeah, and yeah. then I'll be like, oh no, I fucked is... the entire story. I'll be like, is that a question mark over there? Oh, I gotta go have a look. <laughs> oh, look, another question mark. Oh, piece of candy. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm gonna get lost. I'm fine with it. I mean, I, I don't mind a super long game occasionally, but if this is like 40, to, 40 hours, 35, 40 hours, as main campaign, beelining it, no side quests, it's all right. Pretty solid. I mean, they said replayability. Mm. That's that's what's caught me out. What are they gonna do? I mean, I guess it would be like similar to like Outer Worlds and stuff, where you go back, you make different choices with different settings, and it affects the story as a whole. Because I know that choosing your different kind of class or your, your different background will affect how you interact with the world. So I'm assuming choosing those different kind of like character classes will affect how your story goes forward from that very point. So you, you're affecting your story straight from the get go before you even touch any of the missions. That you could imagine that would be, I hope it is, uh... I hope they do give meaningful choice though in the game. I yeah. highly doubt they won't. Like I know they will. Like that's you you're pretty confident in what CD um Project Red will do. But games like so you brought up the Outer Worlds, that that kind of gives you the illusion of choice and branching storylines where in yeah. the end it ultimately will lead you down to two different paths. You'll converge on those points there. You kind of did something a little different oh, uh, either side of that but it's not truly different. Like you can, it's kind of, it's very black and white. Like you can see the other side of what you're supposed to do or what you could do. So hopefully these guys in making the replayability pretty high, they've really like kind of muddled that and made it really hard to tell. Yeah, just go a little more in depth with it. and Yeah, go yeah. really in depth with it, which you can do with this type of game because it's a very serious, like it's going to obviously be a serious game um, and have yeah. serious tones to it. So you can, you can kind of do that. So I'm, yeah, I'm keen. I think I'm ready. I'd like to see so it longer ready. than forty hours. I Depends on what the side missions are too. If they're talking that side missions are chaining to other side missions, though, at what mm, point does the game yeah. become way too big? You know. But. Hmm. Yeah, I especially just, if, especially I want if they little, want because, replayability. Yeah, but they've already said the map is. They've said the map's quite small as well, so I'm more or less worried about not about what you're gonna do in the world as well, but also like you kind of get a bit bored with the world, like if they don't nail it very well. Some of the areas just because you're constantly going back to the same area, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a different area, like you know, you've go to the warehouse to go do one mission, and then two hours later you're going back to that same warehouse to do another mission sort of like that so i don't yeah. know yeah as long as, I, as long, like, I mean they've, they've talked about the world being pretty easy to evolve i think too like it's got like, it's got like lots of stuff kind of going in oh, on around the world as well so things that you do may change the story as well and i think that's something we're going to see a lot of going forward with gaming um is more world changing stuff according to stories um I was watching. I'm sorry. down for that. Yeah, I was watching something about was it um, Alana Pierce's video. She was talking about um, Half Life Alex, and she started talking about um the way that um. Oh, where's my brain gone? The way games are. <laughs> oh, there was a specific game, the the Parkour Zombie one. Help me. They the. Uh, fuck. Jesus. See, right? Um, I've got Dead by Daylight stuck in my head. Yeah, so do I. It's and not, day, it's, um, then I've got DayZ too, but then it's not that. It's the fucking... It's, it's a rip. Oh, my God. Anyway, rip. so in that game, <laughs> which I will find now while I speak about it, um, there are um, different choices affect the world greatly. Dying and Light. It, dying Light, that's it. Yes. Thank you. God, I played it like a year ago. <laughs> wow, I really struggle with that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the way that 
so Dying Light 2 that's coming out, the way that things are changing, it'll the world will not kind of change and stay that way. It will dynamically change according to different ways that you make choices. So if you align with one faction for a little while and the world starts to change towards that faction's vision and then you kind of switch switch directions and go with another faction, the world will continue to evolve back to whichever way you're going. So it's, it's not just like you made a choice and now the world does this, but it's constantly growing and changing as you make different choices in the story. Yeah. Giving yeah, everyone see, a I really unique... From a really unique kind of gameplay experience and that's apparently where a lot of devs are kind of looking in the next five ten years the way of telling stories and stuff and so also cool. and it comes down to yeah hell yeah it, it comes down to like also when you're talking like that how much how much the developer is willing to invest into it because i yeah. mean you can only make so many decisions and I mean, you can only program so much stuff and write so much dialogue and you're never going to, you know, cover every, every angle. No, you know, no, but just, that's I just kind of will... the scale of where the developer wants to like how far they want to push that. Or... Yeah. I think this is where it will start to sort some of those really committed um, development teams that really want to push that storytelling element aside from the ones that are just, yeah. they, they want to make a good game. And there's, I'm not saying they're shitty developers, but they're doing they're pushing those boundaries and doing something different and i think that's where we'll see a lot of like game of the year potential that way as well especially that's cd mm. project red have got that in spades man they've got yeah they've got exactly the resources, they've got the money they've got the time they've got everything they need to make this game and i mean don't forget this game's been cooking for a very long time it has been like but that that, that, that can i mean now I know as much as that's a good sign, it could also be a bad sign. But it's probably not in this case, but it's also one of those things. We no, no, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. They, they don't forget, they had The Witcher 3. Mm. So that was the game they were also working on while working on Cyberpunk. Turned out, Witcher 3 turned out pretty good. Yeah, it was okay. Just, you just know. All right. It was alright. It was okay. It wasn't too bad. So, anyway... <laughs> Moving on from that, I'd guarantee you though, before we finish off that, that we're going to see a lot more cyberpunk stuff. Um, soon. Yeah, yeah, over the, over the Christmas holidays and stuff, we're going to start seeing a lot more. I think I don't want to yeah, see much that. more, but I just want like little bits like this, like things that will be happening. But I don't want any more teasers or anything. Just give me a give me a final launch trailer and I'm done. I, I want to go in as blind as possible. <laughs> no, yeah, it's that. not going to happen. But also, I definitely think you'll see a big marketing push from this game, um, especially in that last month before launch mm. next year. Yeah, because the, it just it looks super cool. If you've seen their artworks and their art assets they've got on their main their main web page for Cyberpunk, yeah, dude, it is. Oh, so dude, they, they were cool. doing like a, a PC, a sponsored PC giveaway channel, and they made this like epic fucking PC to show off. It wasn't the one they were giving away, but they gave it to the people that were doing it and it looks so fucking cool it's all brightly colored little custom panels on the inside and it looks so fucking cool so um yeah, yeah like the stuff they do will be will be awesome no doubt because i love the i love the aesthetic of what they've got going on as well yeah definitely night city looks cool as yeah and, uh, yeah we'll leave that for now otherwise we're just gonna get lost in the cyberpunk and we mm -hmm. don't want to do that just yet Ew. so next and last on our list of uh news to go through tonight is rockstar games his next project is rumored to be a new ip set in the medieval era so eagle eye fans recently picked out this on a rather interesting line in rockstar's india artist linkedin profile that's a bit difficult to say job responsibilities creating modular environment pieces with organic finish carefully following medieval architecture and style so the LinkedIn profile has since been edited and has removed the telltale line, but of course the internet never forgets. That said, in the days since that LinkedIn clue was found, another Redditor has popped up with some juicy rumors from a source they claim has provided accurate GTA Online and Red Dead 2 details in the past. So basically, Project Medieval is going to be Rockstar's next game. It is not Grand Theft Auto 6 or the previously rumored Bully 2. It isn't mentioned if the game will be open world, but it will supposedly have some sword fighting and dueling mechanics. 
according to the Liga, the game is fairly far along with Rockstar aiming for a quarter one 2021 release date. That's actually not too far away. Yeah, and if that's true, close. expect that to reveal the game fairly soon. Of course, the take all this is with a massive grain of salt, but whispers of a medieval Rockstar project have been bouncing around for a while. What do you think? I think they've got some Rockstar have an uphill battle. I mean, they've got to go you up what? against they've got to go up against Kingdom Come Deliverance, man. And that game is fucking phenomenal. I haven't played Kingdom Come Deliverance, but you can't tell me Rockstar has an uphill battle against anyone. No one... Rockstar are the hill. They're sitting at the bottom, the middle, the top. That's where they are. Yeah. But... I'm telling you. Like, like it was really funny, because um, I, I, when, I, when I found this story, it was because the developers from Kingdom Come Deliverance um, retweeted it and said, Hey, Rockstar, if you need any help, we'll... Um, We'll give you some pointers. <laughs> well, they've, they've, they've got they've got really good um really good drilling mechanics like really good mechanics all around big open world really good story um but yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what they come up with because I mean Red Dead Two I'm is really thinking, good is it gonna be more just, like Red Dead Two though but medieval it's gonna be yeah that's all yeah it's gonna it's be that um it have to I was, be. oh no that means they're gonna want to touch an online mode to it aren't they. They always do. Oh. <laughs> what are you on about? Box up, stop, just <laughs> it, 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 whatever, whatever online cash. stuff you have working on right now, just stop. Because it's, it's it's never amazing. I mean, it makes you a lot of money. I get it, but still, focus on the single player. It, this would be um, this would be really cool if this is the. I'd be more excited for this than if they just announced the next Grand Theft Auto or the. Next oh, definitely, Grand Theft. yeah. I'm um, this I'm is totally a down for something different. To go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Don't um, take yeah. this route for sure. Yeah, Medieval's a lot of fun. I said, I mean, I was playing, I was playing Kingdom Come Deliverance until my computer crashed when I was playing it and deleted my fucking save. But <laughs> I just, I, I don't, I don't have the heart to go back yet. I'm like, oh, I, just, I want to, but I just like, I, I don't know. I'll give it like six months and go back or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, this is, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Be interesting if they um they do release it at that date, the twenty twenty one first quarter yeah, of twenty twenty one. That's not far away. Yeah, at all. It's, what, yeah, it gives them what over a year, a year and a bit. Really, just over a year, and we haven't had an announcement yet. So we'd have mm. to be seeing something early, early next year but as they, far as announcements, somewhere around Easter. Rockstar yeah. do that though. Rockstar, are pretty yeah, true. They're pretty good at re announcing things quite late and then, you know, then releasing it. So, cool. I'm hoping this is true and I hope that's the direction they go with it. But would they take that risk, especially after I don't think they, well, I don't Do you think they were happy with Red Dead 2 sales and they're online? Online, not so much. Online was, like, it's very quiet. Uh, it's nowhere near as successful as what the GTA one was. And I think that just speaks to the setting as well. Hmm. Um, because yeah, with, 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 um, with, with GTA, you can, you can go all crazy kinds of ways. Like, you, you live, like, like they have like heaps of different deals here. like, um, like different businesses, different parties, like you can throw jets and all that kind of shit in there. Whereas with Red Dead 2, it's very like, you have to keep to that kind of theme. And there's not yeah. like, unless you start throwing aliens in, which can be quite jarring. There's not a lot else you can do aside from like bounty hunting and shootouts and all that kind of stuff. And I think the medieval zombies, zombies, yeah. The medieval theme is again limiting in the same kind of way that Red Dead is. There's, Depends there's not on as how... much. There's not as much room there to go unless they go like the dragon, like they, yeah, they go totally go off full kilt fantasy. and go, and go like fantasy with it. Um, that's the only oh, way I can see it really working. Again, though, I just rather, really rather than just like ignore the multiplayer stuff and just like give me a fantastic medieval single player. I'll be good with that. Like I said, yeah. I like it's gonna be tough because I'm gonna be constantly comparing it to Kingdom Come, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Because I like the medieval era; it's fun to play it, man. It'd be good. That it will. 
Well, I think that might do us for this evening, mate. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think it should do. We've got everything covered. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Where can we find you, mate? You can find me on Twitter and Mixer at deft underscore puppies. Gray, where are you on the internet? I am over on YouTube predominantly there on Grey Aussie Gamer and also on Twitter. If you need to get in touch with the podcast, go to Twitter at left underscore pod. You can also find us at 9 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time every Sunday night on Twitch and Mixer at twitch.tv static oz and mixer.com def underscore puppies with a Z. That's about, that's about it, really. You should also, if you're there, jump into our Discord because our Discord is growing quite well. And that's about all. Yeah. Don't forget. Everyone rate, review. Enjoys their night. Hope everyone got some good deals on Black Friday. Got oh, some yeah. sick sales. I didn't. Actually, I may have. I don't know. Apparently, I have presents that I'm not allowed to know about yet. But anyway. Everyone have a fantastic time. week. Exactly. Have a fantastic week. And um, I guess we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.